Hi, I'm Ryan Dalglish. Let's talk Bible. Today's topic, 1 Corinthians. We won't go through the whole book today, but in time we'll cover the entire, entirety of this book. When we're reading the scripture, the aim is to understand it. To understand it, of course, from the original intent, who the author was, who the audience was. But a lot of times for us, because of the chapter breaks or because of the subject headings, our minds or our eyes kind of just come to a standstill or a stop. And we just go, oh, here's what this section's about. Here's what this section's about. And we don't get the entire flow. For example, in the Bible I'm currently reading, 1 Corinthians chapters 1 through 4, is broken up into eight different sections if you count by the subject headings. And yet, 1 Corinthians chapters 1 through 4 all covers the same topic. And it's really difficult for us to see that if we're just reading the Bible in bite-sized chunks. A lot of us uh, have busy lives, busy schedules, and so we kind of just read a few verses here, a few verses there, and we think that we have done Bible study. Yeah. The problem is that typically we've missed the intent of the text. So let's look quickly at 1 Corinthians chapters 1 through 4, and we'll see how it's all the same topic. Notice in verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 1 that it says, Some people have come from Chloe's household to visit Paul in Ephesus, and they said, Look, Paul, there's a, there's a problem. We have a big division in the church. Some people are saying that you're their favorite preacher. Some are saying Apollos is their favorite preacher. Some are saying they follow Cephas. And then we've got others who are like, oh, I just follow Jesus. And Paul immediately begins to say, was I crucified for you? Did I bat Were you baptized into my name? He says, no. He goes, I came proclaiming to you the, the cross. I came proclaiming to you the gospel. Not in eloquent words, because I didn't want the cross to be robbed of its power. In other words, Paul says, I didn't come to you preaching big flowery things or trying to impress you with wisdom. He goes, I came to you just proclaiming to you Jesus. And then he begins to ask the question, what were you when you came to know the gospel? Were many of you wise by the world standards? Were many of you eloquent? Were many of you really smart? He says, no. He, had, he says, for the wisdom of God, the things that are wise, the gospel in this case, are foolishness to the world. And the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. And so he's beginning to explain He's asking them, why are you boasting in men? In fact, you can see that the very last verse of chapter 1 is exactly that. He says, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Or he says that we shouldn't boast in men, right? So if, if the, the one who's boasting has to boast in God and not in men. That is a, that's in response to what he started discussing in verse 10. Now in chapter 2, he's going to say that he, Apollos, all those who have come to Corinth to teach, they were taught these things with wisdom by the Holy Spirit. Paul is saying in chapter 2, this wisdom wasn't my own. He goes, it's not stuff that I just knew. He goes, the Spirit taught it to me. That's why he's going to say in 2 Corinthians 2.10 that the Holy Spirit knows and searches the deep things of God. That's why he's going to say in 2 Corinthians 2.16 that he has the mind of Christ. Paul is saying, look, the wisdom that I taught you, he goes, wasn't my own. He goes, it was spiritual wisdom given to me by the Holy Spirit. And now we know from chapter 3 that he's still talking about the same thing, that he hasn't switched topics yet. He tells them in, in chapter 4, he goes, sorry, chapter 3, verse 4, he says, I see that you're still infants. I see that you're still immature. Why? He goes, because if one of you says, I'm following Apollos, one of you says, I'm following Paul, he goes, aren't you still children? Aren't you still acting in just a human way? So we can see from chapter 3, he hasn't left the issue that he brought up in chapter 1, verse 10. He hasn't switched from that. And if you're reading only a few verses a day, and you've read chapter 1 a week ago, and now you're to chapter 3, you're, you might miss that connection, that Paul's still talking about the same topic. In fact, chapter 3, verse 5, Paul says, what then, is, what then is Paul? What then is Apollos? He goes, we're simply servants through whom you believed. Verse 6 of chapter 3, Paul says, I planted, and Apollos is the one who waters. And he says, but it's the Lord who causes growth. In other words, don't boast in the planter. Don't boast in the waterer. So don't boast in Paul. Don't boast in Apollos. He says, boast in the Lord. Boast in, in, in God who causes growth. And then chapter 3, verses 10 through 15, talks about the wise and foolish builder. It says that, uh, it says that there will be some, he goes, I laid the foundation among you. Paul says, I laid the foundation among you. Speaking to the Corinthian church, he was the first to come to them with the gospel. Paul says, I laid the foundation among you of Christ. There's no other foundation that can be laid except Christ. And now someone else is building on it. Paul is referencing Apollos there. Paul is the someone else building on that foundation. And Paul says, each one should be careful in how he builds. This isn't an individual command. It's not saying, hey, Christian, you be careful how you build in your own life. Paul is saying that he, Apollos, and anyone else who would ever endeavor to proclaim truth to the Corinthians should be careful how they build. Here's how we know that, they're, that he's referencing the teachers there and not the church as a whole. Pay attention to the pronouns. He says that he and Apollos, previous in, in verses 6 through 8, 
He and Apollos are the planters and the waterers. He and Apollos are the builders. And he says, you, to the church, you are God's field being planted and watered, and you are God's building being built together by Paul and Apollos. Paul who laid the foundation and Apollos who is now building on it. And so then he says to them, your teachers have to be careful how they build on the foundation of Jesus because they can build with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. And then at the end of chapter 3, he tells them uh, down in verse 21 again, he says, don't boast in man. He says, all things belong to you, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas. So here we are again at the end of chapter 3, addressing the exact same thing. He hasn't left this topic from chapter 1, verse 10. And then back into chapter 4, he says this, how then should you think of us? I love this text. How then should you think of us? Paul isn't saying, hey, how should the world view Christians? Paul is saying, hey, church in Corinth, how should you think of us? Paul, Apollos, Cephas, who have taught you, how should you regard us? You should regard us as servants of God, stewards entrusted with the mysteries of Christ. You'll notice in verse 6, he says this. He says, I have applied all of these things, everything that he's taught up to chapter 4. He goes, I've applied all of these things to myself and Apollos so that you will know not to go beyond your limits, so that you will know not to boast in anything beyond yourself. So here it is again. Chapter 4, he's still addressing the issue that he brought up in chapter 1. When we're reading 1 Corinthians, occasionally somebody will come to me and they'll ask me to preach something like 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15. Occasionally, people still assign me a text, which is perfectly fine. But they'll ask me to say, hey, come in and teach 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15. And I'll do so, but I'll do so in context of how it fits in light of Chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, all the way through 1 Corinthians chapter 4, there is a context to it. And, and Paul is addressing first, in these first four chapters of Corinthians, the division that's happening in the body over who their favorite preachers are. I, I just want to take a moment to pause here and say, don't we kind of still do that? Don't we find ourselves divided with other believers because of who their favorite preachers are or who their favorite preachers are not? And we get in these fights and these turmoils. And I would take this moment just to remind us as the church I would take this moment to remind us as the church that it isn't about our favorite preacher. It's about God who causes growth. That our boast is never in a preacher. Our boast is never in man. Our boast is in Jesus Christ, who's, who is our foundation and who does cause us to grow. And then just a quick reminder to the preachers out there from this text. You and I as preachers, we need to be careful how we build on the foundation. We need to be careful that we are not coming to people proclaiming that this is our wisdom. We need to remind people that this is what God has taught. This is who God is. And that as best as we can as teachers, we need to make sure that people aren't boasting in us, but that our lives and our teaching are pointing to Christ, who is our boast and our confidence. I hope that this will help you a little bit as you read through the scripture. We'll talk about the rest of 1 Corinthians another time. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it if you're so inclined to do, and I'll see you soon.